members of the council, staff, members of the public, thank, thank you so much for uh, being here. Always a pleasure to uh, see you. Call this meeting to uh, order. Would we uh, please call the roll? Council Member Jablonski? Here. Council Member Fisichelli? Here. Council Member Bright Cruz? Here. Vice Mayor McKay? Here. Mayor Nelson? Here. We stand for the pledge. Okay. It's um, always a pleasure to see uh, Representative uh, Stark and, um, again, a very dear friend of the Town of Southwest Ranch is always there to uh, help out no matter uh, what it is, whether the Southwest Ranch is uh, issue, residents that come to me that, uh, that tell me how uh, helpful and uh, how appreciative uh, they are with regards to you know, potentially resolving the issues, and even sometimes when he can't, he's just always so wonderful communicating and giving uh, advice. We asked uh, Representative Stark to uh, come here and give us an update, and of course he was also involved with uh, securing, uh, you know, the funds for the uh, for the guardrail project. And I know that he was actively involved with that and, act and, and checking on the status of that, and we're very, very uh, appreciative. So without any further ado, again, uh, Representative Rick Stark, always a pleasure to see you, and thank you for being here. Now, before I begin, I'm going to address the... You can grab that mic off that platform. I'm going to represent the commission. I'm going to talk to the commission from here, but I just want you to know that this you can is... take a, it out, Richard. It's all right. This is a great commission to work with, you know. I mean, I've got four cities I represent, and I want you to know, and of course, this place would not be the same without Vince here either. <laughs> and I, uh, but but uh, and, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, but uh, this has been a great town to work with. I the mean, old people can't hear you. How are we? Oh, okay. There we go. Wow. I hate to tell you, I'm one of those old people too. I mean, we were comparing hearing aids just before the before the before the meeting started. Anyway, I just wanted to say that this has a, been a terrific uh, uh, town uh, council to uh, work with. And uh, anytime they ask me for something or I answer back, I always get somebody on the phone. They're always very easy. They're not like, because uh, I've worked with some uh, cities that are very, you know, demanding. And, and these guys, they know what they want. They're focused. And, you know, they, they help get the job done for what they request. So, anyway, give me a minute. I'm going to uh, turn around and face the uh, commission and t tell them what went on in Tallahassee this year. All right. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Um, you know, the one thing that uh, a state representative and a state senator do, and it's the one duty we have. We can go up there. We could look at uh, all. We have 3,000 bills to look at this year. Literally, that's how many were proposed. Uh, and we can look at all those, but the only thing that we are constitutionally bound to do is to pass a budget. And so the budget this year that we passed uh, was $82.3 billion. This is the largest budget in the state's history. Uh, shows that the economy has you know, gotten back on its feet. Most of the major product projects that everybody wants from uh, both political sides of the aisle wanted were addressed this year. And uh, just to give you a few uh, things about what went on, uh, there was uh, uh, unanimous support for uh, funding something called Legacy Florida, which establishes uh, management plans for Everglades restoration, water flow levels for the natural springs, farming around Lake Okeechobee, and this $250 million is going to be recurring for the next several years. There's not a sunset on it at this point in time. Uh, the governor had uh, requested, and I, I spoke to him, you know, he spoke to each one of us personally back in December. Uh, he had wanted a, a billion dollar tax cut this year, and I do happen to sit on the um, Finance and Tax Committee, so we really did take a quite, quite a big look at it. In fact, we had originally approved about 989 million, so we were pretty close in what we could do with tax cuts, but when the uh, Senate President and the Speaker of the House looked at it, and the major committee chairs. I mean, these were the ones who really make the decisions. I mean, I can sit in a committee, there are certain things I can get done, 
but the committee chairs are the ones that make the, made the basic decisions as to what agenda does and does not get done. And uh, they just did not feel that a, a billion dollar tax cut at this year with, you know, with the needs of the state, you know, was worth doing. They didn't feel that in the long run it was actually going to benefit uh, citizens of the state. But what's very telling and what's very important, uh, the three largest economic drivers in our state are tourism, uh, agriculture, and uh, construction. And we've been working to try to expand our economic base for many, many years. I, I just finished my fourth uh, year up there, and this is something we speak about every year. So we uh, approved a, a 65 mil actually $75 million uh, tax cut in the form of something that's an incentive to manufacturers. So uh, there will be now be a permanent tax break for people who want to go into the manufacturing business here in the state of Florida. If you're already in manufacturing, you want to buy new equipment, you're not going to pay sales tax. And they found that there was sometimes like, it almost turned out to be like double taxation. So the state's very, and, and really people from both parties were very attuned to uh, trying to keep the state, uh, you know, a low tax state. And uh, that's why the governor today was in, uh, in California. I know he's a little bit controversial, he's in California, but he's there because he's trying to entice businesses that think the tax base is too high there to come to the state of Florida. And we are one of the lower tax states. We don't have a, uh, you know, a, a state income tax. Uh, now, on top of the uh, tax holiday or tax permanent tax break for, you know, for machinery, uh, we did approve a, a three-day uh, sales tax holiday for back to school. We'll, we'll have that again in August. And uh, I, you know, I have been asked, you know, why do we have to approve this every year? It's because we have to look at the budget each particular year, see what's in it, and see how long it can be. Because we had it, I think last year it was on two consecutive weekends, or it might be for a week. This year it was approved for like a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday. That'll be in, ba in August. Uh, education is one of our largest budget items. And uh, this year the budget for education is uh, $20.2 uh, billion. And uh, we now, we approved the largest per student uh, funding in the history of the state. It's uh, going to be just under $7,200. Now, I have to say, you know, this is one of those times as a politician that I'm saying public, I'm going to sp speak a little bit out of both sides of my mouth on this one. It is the largest budget per student, but many of us know that 2008, before the Great Recession, funding was only about $100 less than it is now. So if you go by today's dollars, we're really still a little bit short. But I still do want to give credit for the legislature that we are trying year after year, and I know we have a few teachers here, maybe even on the, on the, on the commission, uh, but we are doing what we can every year to try to increase you know, funding per student, because it, it's, it's just an important you know, part of the state to get businesses is to, have, to, is to have good schools. So you know, we're just going to keep going this year after year until we can get the student funding higher each year. Uh, also in education, um, we approved what's called preeminence for the University of Florida and Florida State. I'm not sure anybody in the audience here have students either at Florida or Florida State or had one that went there. Well, okay, for, so for both those schools, we approved $10 million extra dollars for each school, which was going to try to improve, you know, uh, as far as uh, professors and courses and academics. And both those schools are what we call preeminence. It used to be just University of Florida, but Florida State's been added. And we're looking to have both of those schools to be among the premier state schools throughout the nation. And that's the reason for that. Uh, also, um, uh, there's a new, uh, something new called uh, the best and brightest, and the state will be funding teachers that they feel are among, you know, the brightest. Now, it's a little controversial as to how they're going to do it, but still the idea that we're trying to reward better teachers is, is something good that the state's doing. Now, they might want to do it a little bit different next year. Maybe I'll have a proposal for them, but, uh, but the fact that we're doing this is important. Uh, and then just a few other items. Um, now, this is, again, this is a controversial item, but I did want to bring it up. Uh, the legislature approved uh, for students to be able to go to any school in the state that they want to go to. So that if you are in Broward County and you know of a traditional or a charter public school in Palm Beach County and you want to go there, 
you can go there as long as the school has not met capacity. Now, I was asked by uh, parents in the city of Weston how that affects Cypress Bay High School because Cypress Bay is, uh, is a school has uh, uh, met capacity quite some time ago. Uh, and it doesn't really affect uh, you know, Cypress Bay because Cypress Bay has, re has met capacity. The one thing that I debated about that I was concerned about was would, um, would coaches be gaming the system to be trying to recruit students for the various sports and you know the jury's not out on that one we're gonna we're gonna see if that actually comes in supposedly things were put in the bill to help that not to happen but just the fact that students can go anywhere in the state you know it's gonna make it the recruiting violations uh, come a little bit more so that's we're a little bit uh, afraid of that uh, but uh, here's a few other items uh, uh, we passed uh, or looked at 270 bills this year. Now, 3,000 were proposed, but ones that we actually looked at, reviewed, and voted on one way or the other was about 270. So uh, that keeps us busy. I can tell you as a state legislator, sometimes I uh, come home in the evening. I Before I leave, I go into my office, and my aide has put a stack on the desk. We might have 80 bills in there, and I have to review them for the next day. So uh, you know, sometimes we really do have our work cut out for us. Uh, but here's just a few other items. Uh, the Senate president this year, a Andy Gardner, uh, has a, a child, uh, I believe that's autistic. And so this year, the legislature spent quite a bit of time trying to come up with a new budget and new spending for for adults and children with developmental disabilities. In fact, I proposed a bill this year that passed, uh, and it, it was actually merged to actually two bills that became one. Uh, but the piece of the bill that I had had to do with um, adults that have a developmental disability. There have been some, uh, some incidents where somebody who has maybe autism, uh, some of the other uh, disabilities may be out in public and looks like they're loitering or they're something not quite right about them. Police will approach and not realize that they have a developmental disability. So groups had come to me and asked if we would file a bill that created a special ID, either for driver's license if they're able to drive or just for an ID. Now it's something that's voluntary, you have to request it, but it'll put the letter D on the bottom of the, the uh, driver's license or ID. It has to be approved by the state, so doctor's records have to be submitted. So. If the police take the uh, the uh, license or ID and swipe it, you know the uh, the you know the information is going to come up, and they're going to realize that this is a different situation and know how to handle it better than you know as far as you know criminal activity or somebody that you know is, is in other words to, to to handle the situation better. And so this passed as part of a larger bill that also worked with um, uh, with Down syndrome, and uh, part of the idea with Down syndrome, but uh, health insurance in the state did not cover uh, speech therapy, occupational therapy, or physical therapy uh, for people with Down syndrome. So that was added into health insurance in the state of Florida. And uh, so, I mean, that passed, this bill passed unanimously. There was no opposition to it. Uh, now here are just a few other items. The Medicaid expansion that we had spoken to a few, for the last few years about uh, having, you know, uh, people who don't have health insurance up to 138% of the federal poverty level, that did not pass this year. Uh, we'll, we'll try it again next year, but uh, uh, we're going to have to wait until after the national election this year to see what's going to happen with health insurance on a, national, on a national basis. Right now, we just have to see if the Affordable Care Act to work and if the Congress actually has the will on both sides to, to make it work. But that's a national issue. I can only work uh, on what the state issues are. But here are just a few other items. Uh, there were uh, three uh, gun bills proposed this year. Now, Florida happens to be a very friendly state for the Second Amendment. Uh, but the bills that we had this year were, they were a little bit controversial. One was uh, for open carry, which means that you, know, you, didn't have, you don't have to conceal the weapon. You can actually carry it you know, on your person and have it in public. And part of the reason that we wanted to do it is because there had been some incidents where you know, maybe you're wearing your jacket and it comes undone and uh, the police arrest you, so we wanted to address that. Uh, but when it came to open carry, the Senate, not the House of Representatives, actually refused to hear the bill in, uh, in one of the committees, so it just didn't advance. Uh, the other bill, which uh, th we had this every year that I've been up there uh, since uh, Sandy Hook in, uh, in, in Connecticut, 
was to uh, allow for uh, teachers in the public schools to be trained to have concealed weapons. And I'm going to tell you both sides of this issue. Now, I'm not, I personally am not in favor of it, and I, you know, I have to go on based on what I hear from uh, law enforcement and from what I hear from the teachers, and what I heard basically was this is not something that we want in the school. However, we're a urban county, and Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach, we have, I think, with the three counties, probably close to six million people. We hire you know, student resource officers within the schools, but there are rural counties and parts of the state that the response time to get there takes a long time. So I understand why there, this request is out, outside of the area. It's very popular once you get north of uh, Orlando. So we'll look at it again next year and you know, maybe we'll come up with a compromise for it. Me personally, I, I just don't think we need it, but uh, you know, if, if there are citizens within the state that are requesting this, we, we've got to look at it. We've got to look at everything that comes up because the needs here in Broward are just not the same as the needs in Ocala or Marion County in that, in that area of the state. Uh, here's uh, oh, on the third issue with uh, with weapons had to do with college campuses. Uh, there was a movement to allow students age 21 and older to have weapons on campus. But um, uh, former Senator Thrasher, who was very who was a very powerful Senate senator in the uh, in the Senate for many years, is now the president of Florida State. And I don't know how we would have feel have how we felt about this as a senator, but I can tell you, as the president of Florida State University, he was dead set against it, and he really led the effort to you know to have that defeated. So, uh, so these issues are not going to be. But we do, like I said, you know, when it comes to guns, we're very friendly with them in this state. You know, we do. Uh, they're, they're, my understanding now, I think we have a permanent tax break actually on buying of ammunition. I have to check that out to see if they actually implemented that, but we, we passed that I believe last year. All right, just a few other items. Um, in jury cases in the state that have a capital outcome, we had where a jury by a simple majority could request and you know, tell the judge that we think that you know, the death penalty should be awarded. The U.S. Supreme Court said that that was not constitutional. Most of the states, it has to be unanimous. So we compromised, and moving forward, if there is a 10 to 2 or an 11 to 1 jury decision in favor of a capital punishment, then the state will administer it. So we made a, we made, we made a, a compromise. But we probably are going to propose next year again that it be unanimous, because that's what most of the states are doing. Uh, just a few other things. Um, uh, medical marijuana. Uh, did pass the state this year. Now, it's not like Colorado. It's not like California. If someone is terminally ill, and this still has to be done by regulation, we passed it, but then the regulatory authorities have to come in and say how oh, this is going to be implemented. But if somebody is terminally ill, they are going to be allowed in the state of Florida moving forward uh, to be able to get uh, medicinal marijuana you know, for, for pain and whatever you know, what, what the, the doctors prescribe it for. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Okay, uh, fracking did not make it this year. There was a, a movement to regulate fracking, but the movement to regulate fracking actually was going to uh, overturn what about 40 counties had proposed. 40 counties, it might be 37, but close to 40 counties out of the 67 counties within the state had decided that they did not want fracking within their counties. So if we passed this regulation, it was going to say, we don't go with home rule, the state's going to regulate, and everything that you have is no good. That didn't mean that the state was going to approve it, but if they would, then the counties that didn't want it, it wouldn't move forward. The counties would have to, it would have to be undone. And so most of the people in the legislature did not agree with this, and so the bill did not pass. So that, 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 that was the one on fracking. Uh, a few other items, uh, if people, if you're following alimony reform, didn't make it this year. Governor vetoed it. It did pass the legislature, but the governor vetoed it. Uh, also, uh, there were some more. I mean, I can talk about this privately, people, because I think I'm speaking long enough. Uh, but uh, there was a limitation put on uh, abortion rights and uh, Planned Parenthood this year. Uh, some of the bills that I got passed this year, I had a bill passed regarding automobile warranties. Uh, we were approached by a few of the uh, auto dealers that it was unclear. Uh, you, you know how you get those uh, key fobs that cost like $500 if you lose it? 
you know, like for a BMW or Lexus or just about any car, the dealers said that we're not sure if we can cover this. And the law was unclear, so uh, I was asked to carry that bill, and we passed it, passed the legislature unanimously. Uh, also, um, an interesting bill, uh, I don't know if any of you here have done this crime, but it is a crime in the state of Florida. If a man and a woman are not married and they are living under the same room, it's, excuse me, the same roof, it is a criminal offense in the state of Florida. The bill was passed in 1868, and uh, this was the third year in a row that I brought that bill up. And this year, we had a different, uh, a different chair of the Judiciary Committee, and he let the bill go through and it passed. Only we had like six people vote against it, so it went unanimously. So now, you can, as we say, live in sin. Uh, but, <laughs> but, it, but really, it was, it, it was a little bit of an embarrassment to the state, because from time to time, it would get in the news and people would make fun of the state of Florida. Now also, uh, now we discussed this but you know, before the, we started tonight, the uh, town of uh, Southwest Ranches had asked for a $300,000 appropriation uh, for guardrails uh, within, the, within the town. And we were not able to get this passed last year. The governor vetoed it. Uh, and this was actually, I mean, I'm just going to tell you, this was a labor of love. We had to really work on it hard. Uh, one of the issues that, you know, and, and when this is, you know, it's a little bit different passing a bill than when you're doing an appropriation. We stay over an extra weekend. We have hundreds of line items, anywhere from 25000 to millions of dollars to take a look at. And as a legislator, if you're working on these committees, you basically know what your issue is, what you're working on, and you go through the first time, you find the line item that you want, and every time you go back, you look for your line to see if it's been addressed by the Senate. And we were very nervous about this project because, the, because I, like I said, the governor vetoed it last year. And just as we have it moving forward, I get a text, you gotta change the name of the bill, you can't call it guardrails, you've gotta call it roadside barriers. I said, why? He says, the governor's staff likes it better. We never got a change. The committee chair said to me, Stark, I got a change for you. Nobody ever changed it. So we get all these items proved. The budget's going through, and I'm looking. It still says guardrails. And I said, oh, here we're going to go get this. Oh, after all this work, it's going to get vetoed again. Did not get vetoed. The governor approved it this year, so you can congratulate the town council. This thing is approved, and I guess from there on, you're going to have to move forward and figure out how you can do this, but you got the appropriation. And the other good thing about the appropriation, sometimes we get an appropriation, and then there's language in there telling you how you have to spend the money. You know, not only what it's for, but how you have to spend it. So you don't have that. It just says, for the guardrails, so it got done. We had a few other things that didn't go through, but this one went through this year. So there's always next year. Next year we'll work on something else. All right, and one last thing. Uh, this is a health insurance bill uh, that I co-sponsored. I actually carried it last year, but I, I worked as a uh, co-sponsor this year. There's a problem that we have often with health insurance. Very often, now, everybody here that has health insurance has a plan that has a network. Now, Medicare doesn't necessarily have that unless you have Medicare Advantage. But on a health insurance plan, you have your network doctors. You may have a plan that allows you to go out of the network, and then the reimbursement's not quite as good. So what we, the problem that we have is that people will show up for emergency care or just for care in the hospital, and they'll say, well, I know that you know Memorial Hospital or Cleveland Clinic, whichever hospital is, I know they're in network. I'm going to go there. And then you get... A few weeks later, you get a bill, and you said, who's this doctor? I don't remember seeing this doctor. And the doctor is charging you outside the network. He's not a provider. So he's going and billing you because he, you know, they know that you're not, you, know, you, know, you have a plan. An HMO, you have to be a network. But a PPO has out-of-network benefits. So if they know it's a PPO customer, very often you get treated by somebody not in the network. You don't know it. And 
you know, I kept bringing this up year after year. I said, this is not fair to consumers who do their due diligence. They go in, they know it's a network, and they get billed out of network. In the network, you know, you might have a $500 deductible. The plan is going to pay the negotiated amount, whether you have a deductible or not. If you're out of network, the deductible could be $2,000, then they're going to pay 50% of what they would have paid had you been in the network, and at the much higher rate. So... Finally, and this is what I always love about our, our legislative process, the incoming speaker had a problem with his family. So that bill got brought up this year, and we were able to pass it. So, But this is good. This is a very good consumer bill. I don't know how they're going to implement this yet, but it's very important. You show up as a consumer, and these are your consumer rights. You should not be billed by somebody you did not know who they were and at a much higher rate. And there was a lot of problem. I've every, I, I'm not, this is most of my business is health insurance. I spoke to so many insurance agents that this is a problem. We get calls all the time about, you know, it's not just writing a policy. It's how, how do you, somebody get, you know, their claims paid. And we, we, this, this is a process. Not everybody understands that bill. You got this service and it doesn't match up. And it's something called an explanation of benefits. You know, it's a very important thing. It's, it's, it's tough for the consumers out there. So anyway, so that was the year. But the legislature is a very pro-consumer. Uh, and look, we have both sides. We got the far left. We got the far right. Uh, the Senate is actually the, the more mature body generally. Uh, but the legislature just happened to work very good together this year, everybody. And uh, so I, I thank you for giving me a few minutes here. I, I, I could, you know, you, you know me, a state legislator, I could probably speak another half an hour, but I think, I think you've had, about had enough at this point. But thank you very much, and it's always a pleasure to work with you. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> and again, thank you for taking... Put this thing back. Yeah. That's why we have December. We can't do it either. Okay. Great to see you again. Uh, thanks, Rick, for all your help, all your support. Okay. Thank you, December. Does um, anybody up here have any questions of Representative Stark? I see Andy Everhands uh, up. And if there's any members of the any members of the audience too, he's here. Now is a good time, you know. I'm going to meet with him next week. Great, great. <laughs> Andy. Yeah, Representative Stark. I want to take a moment to thank you for being here tonight. But I also want to tell you how appreciative I am of the opportunity to interact and communicate with you and your staff during the session as items come up. That, that communication is vital, and I want to thank you for that. There was one issue, one bill that did pass this year that I do want to get you more information on that, that perhaps creating a, a problem and a burden for some of our residents. And that was, took away our ability to special assess vacant agricultural properties. Now, for example, like a fire assessment, you know, and while I understand the intent of that, our inability to do that transfers that cost because our costs are our costs by category, transfers that and puts that on the backs of other property owners. So if, if that's something that uh, if the legislature can maybe revisit a little bit next year, I will get you more information on that. But I, I did want to put that on your, on your radar and make you aware of that. All right, but give me, get, just get me the information and you know, we'll review that, see what we can do. Will do, thank you. D, I see you have a uh, question. Hey Rick, can we just get a response on the on the mic? That way we have it. It's yeah. being uh, recorded. It'll be it'll be no, no in the mic. No, I didn't want to cut you off. You know, there's others I'm sure that well, being since I can't right. get this thing off, you know, right. that's all right. Uh, but yeah, this is something that uh, we've been. You know, it's an issue that I think mo I mean, got to remember. I'm a, I'm a citizen of the state also, and uh, we constantly ask that question. You know, what happened? 
And really, basically, what happened is that uh, they take that money for other projects as well as for school items. And we talk about this every session. We, you know, you know, there's 120 of us up there in the in the state house, and until you really get elected, you don't necessarily understand how the process works. The power is still basically within the committee chairs, the Speaker of the House, and the same thing on the Senate side, plus the staff of everybody. And uh, they've been, you know, playing the shell game with, you know, with this money for a while. I'm going to sort of punt on this, and I'm going to tell you why. Because right now we're trying, we're kind of in the middle of trying to figure out what we're going to do with the whole gaming issue within the state itself. And until we come up with, you know, is the compact going to be approved? Are they going to, is casino gambling going to be approved? You know, is it going to expand? Then we're going to have to really start taking a hard look at it. I mean, I do it all the time. But if you would like to give me your name by the time I leave, and I'd be happy to personally look into it for you. I mean, I really would, because this is an issue that bothers actually all of us. Yeah, and you've got to remember, it's not like it happened this particular, this has been going on for, for 30 years. So, uh, but I'd be happy to, to work with you on that. Thank you, Rick. Anybody else have any questions? Fantastic. Thank you, Rick. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for, again for all that, uh, that you do. Okay, the next item is a quasi-judicial item. And uh, Kevin Hart, always a pleasure to see you. And uh, welcome to the town of Southwest Ranches again, here officially, obviously, always there and available and always so very helpful, you and your staff, and we appreciate the relationship very, very much. Before we get into this item, I'm gonna have, uh, turn it over to Keep to ex explain the uh, process. He can't speak. Mayor, excuse me, because I do have a little laryngitis tonight. Um, this is quasi-judicial in nature. We have one item on the agenda, the rules are, uh, in the uh, package, if anyone has any questions about the rules or would like them read, won't be me, but it will be read. If not, we'll uh, proceed. Uh, Yvette's going to swear in everyone who may wish to speak on this item. Do, do you, you swear? Can, you can stand and raise your right hand if you wish to speak. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you, Mayor. I might as well do it now. Has there been any ex, any new ex parte communication concerning this item? No. Seeing none, we're pleased to have Kevin Hart here from South Broward Drainage District. In uh, Jeff Kadem's stand today, we have Susan from Melgren Planning Group. I think that's the name now. I always mess it up. Um, Susan, if you could please uh, produce the staff report. Um, do you want me to read the whole staff report? Uh, does the summarize? council, would the council like the entire report read or just it's a summary? Second, we know what it is, second reading. I think just a minor just, revision. Just a brief summary. Reading. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is uh, a rezoning of 13.33 acres owned by the South Broward Drainage District from, uh, from rural ranch to community facility. Uh, the, I believe you are also, uh, voting on a letter of no objection and on a site plan uh, regarding a new maintenance facility building and covered parking. We're going to split them up into the three items, but yes. uh, pleased to have uh, Kevin here from South Broward. If you could just state your name for the record and <clears throat> anything you have to add. Thank you. And council members, pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Kevin Hart, District Director with South Broward Drainage District, and I'd also like to recognize our uh, District Chairperson, Scott Hodges, is also uh, in attendance. Thank you. Um, anything else to add? Uh, nothing to add. I will be happy to answer any questions from Thank the you. Council. Great. The first item on the agenda is a rezoning. Does any member of the public wish to speak on the rezoning? Seeing none, public session closed. Mayor? Over to you for deliberation on the first item. I'm Thank going to ask uh, Yvette read. to read it in. An ordinance of the town of the Southwest Ranches, Florida, rezoning approximately 13.3 acres owned by the South Broward Drainage District, 
generally located on the west side of Dykes Road between 61st Street Court and Southwest 66th Street from Rural Ranch District to Community Facility District, restricting the property for governmental use, providing for conflicts, providing for recordation, and providing an effective date. Application number RZ-20-16. Thank motion you, to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Oh, we already did. See no public comment. Public comment is now closed. Again, we have a uh, motion and a second to approve. Any additional questions, council, or uh, comments, council? Seeing none, call the roll, please, Yvette. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Bright Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number five, Keith. Mayor, the next item is a simple item to enable uh, SPDD to enable their plat to be amended a delegation request to Broward County so that they can construct the improvements that are shown in item six. So it's just increasing the square footage that they can build on their property. We ask uh, the you consider that for approval. I don't know if uh, you have anything to add. Hey, Kevin, do you? Uh, I just add one, one item. Uh, we're only uh, asking to increase the square footage to accommodate the building that we're uh, proposing to expand, nothing beyond the uh, expansion that we're proposing. So uh, it's going to stay within the uh, limits of what we want to build and nothing further at this time. Thank you. Any members of the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, public sessions closed. Mayor, turn over to you for deliberation. Thank you, Keith. Council? I'm going to have uh, Vet read the motion in. Okay. Motion to, oh, we're going to wait. Sorry. Wait. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. A motion to authorize the town administrator to submit a letter of no objection to Broward County to enable the South Broward Drainage District's plat note for the property generally located at 6591 Southwest 160th Avenue to be amended to enable SBDD to construct its delineated improvements. Thank you, Vet. Motion to approve. Second. And we have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, approve. Any members of the uh, public again wish to comment on this item? Seeing none, public comment is uh, now closed. Again, we have a motion and a second to approve. No, approve. no additional questions, comments, or concerns. Call the question, please, Yvette. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Bright Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number six. Thank you, Mayor. The last item on the agenda for the quasi judicial is a resolution to approve uh, the maintenance facility spoken of the last uh, two items turn it over to Susan do you have anything to add on the maintenance facility um, no I think uh, it was uh, presented as being uh, a fairly reasonable size and also that a great deal of open space will remain on the site uh, even after the building is completed Thank you. Mr. Hart, do you have anything to add on this? Uh, just uh, two small uh, points I'd like to make for the council. First is uh, just to reassure uh, this uh, expansion is within our what we would call our existing building footprint. We are not doing anything in our vacant field. That is a, uh, uh, a debris disposal area in, in the event of, a, uh, of an emergency. Uh, disaster situation uh, so I know there may have been some concerns about that that uh, we're actually working to uh, better organize that area and and uh, clean it up a little bit we're going to continue to do that and um, uh, that's really uh, the one point I wanted to make thank you any members of the public wish to speak on the site plan approval seeing none public sessions closed Mayor, I'll have a vet read it in and then turn over to you for deliberation. Thank you, Keith. Council? A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving a site plan modification for the South Broward Drainage District uh, maintenance facility, generally located on the west side of Dykes Road between Southwest 61st Street Court and Southwest 66th Street, providing it for an effective date, application number SP-62-16. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing none, public comment is now closed. Again, council, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, a vet call the question, please. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Bright Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. 
Congratulations, Kevin. Scott, always a pleasure to see you as, uh, as well. Thank Appreciate you. the you being here and the working relationship that we have. You're always so very, very helpful as, uh, as well. Uh, uh, mutual uh, feeling and uh, I'd like to thank the council for their continued support. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number uh, seven, public comment. Mayor, we have two speakers tonight. It's three minutes per speaker. The rest of the rules are on the agenda. The first speaker is Chuck Lanza, followed by Newell Hollingsworth. Good to see you, Chuck. Good to we see have you three. Too, Mayor. Third and final speaker. Uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the council, Mr. Administrator, Chuck Lanza, 11562 Gorm Drive, Cooper City, Florida. Here today to talk to you about a couple of items that are going on in the county. Uh, although I am a candidate for the Broward County Commission, I'm not here to talk about that. But as the emergency manager for Miami, uh, for Broward County, I used to be Miami Dade also, but I have met with all the department directors in the past in Broward County. And now I'm going back around as part of my campaign to meet with them and find out issues that may be affecting this community, the District 5 community. And there are two items that I've run into in, already in the last couple of weeks. I'd like to bring to your attention and I would like to come back periodically and update you on these items and other items that I, I, I come to come up with or I run into and I also will put updates on my website chucklanza.com the first item is the transit tax that the county has approved for being on for on the ballot for uh, November it will take the uh, tax from six percent to seven percent uh, sales tax and it'll generate about three hundred million dollars for transit and uh, construction of transit as well as the infra infrastructure and for the vehicles. Uh, it appears that they, they're going to settle on a 70-30 split between the county and the cities and each city will have some rules to follow in spending that 30% that, uh, of the money. Currently there's 24 million dollars of ad valorem money that comes out of our taxes that pays for transit. That money will now be replaced by the 300 million that is coming into the, the county and to the municipalities. That $24 million is one I'm focusing on now. I want to see that go back to the, to the taxpayers who are going to be paying an additional 1% on their sales tax, and this will act, could actually reduce their uh, ad valorem taxes. It's going to be a very, very difficult issue for the, for the county. I don't think it's going to be a very difficult issue for the, the voters. Uh, we do have a lot of transit problems in Broward, and we need to be working on them, but a $300 million tax over 30 years is pretty significant. And the other one that affects, us, affects Southwest ranches is the airport noise abatement. It, they have a, the airport is now under uh, FAA Part 150, going to do a noise abatement uh, review, and they're going to involve all the municipalities in this area. Anybody who's in the landing path of uh, Fort Lauderdale International Airport will be on this committee to identify problems with the noise, abatement strategies, and then implementation of those strategies. So the county has taken a lead on this. It's a federally, it's not mandated, but it's something that some of the, the more forward-leaning communities do, and Florida, no, Fort Lauderdale International Airport is one of those that's doing it. I'll be available after the meeting to answer any questions, and I'd like to come back periodically to update you. Absolutely, Chuck. Always a pleasure to uh, see you. Thank you uh, very much. With regards to that uh, tax increase, I'm, I believe, uh, Andy, we're going to have it on the uh, agenda for uh, conversation and discussion two weeks from now on our agenda because uh, they're asking, uh, obviously, for no local agreements from all the municipalities uh, regarding this one cent uh, increase and what that means potentially to uh, the town of Southwest Ranches. So we'll be having that discussion uh, in two weeks. But Chuck, great to see you. Great Appreciate to see you. it. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good evening. Noel Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Let's talk trash again. Since Thanksgiving, it is now six months, and the problem has not abated. Three weeks ago, we had on 199th Avenue, and that is all I am talking about because I have not t looked at any other areas. We had the west side of 199th Avenue picked up, but the east side was not picked up. And this was at 7 o'clock at night. 
when they came down and picked up 199th on the west side of the road. The next day, I called Town Hall and reported that the east side had not been picked up. Well, being a hard case, I left my can out there and told Town Hall that if it was spilled all over by the animals in the middle of the night, garbage people could pick it up or someone from Town Hall could come pick it up. I wasn't. Friday night at 6.30, Garbage truck comes by and picks up my trash. The next morning, at one minute after seven, they come by and pick up my trash again. I'm sorry, 12 hour cycle is a, a little bit short. Now, let's go to yesterday, which is Wednesday, our normal pickup. 199th was not picked up at all. And since we get Trash pickup so late, it's after 5 o'clock, town hall closes. We normally get trash pickup if we get it between 6.30 and 7 o'clock at night. So it didn't happen. So this morning, we're, we get up, and at 9 o'clock, trash truck comes by and picks up. This is not acceptable. You've got the bulk working. That was a big problem back Christmas time. Now, it's either the recycle or the garbage is not picked up. Missing one out of three on Wednesday is not acceptable. Should be three out of three. If there is fines for non-compliance and pickup, let's put them into effect. It's been six months. They haven't got it right yet. I don't think they ever will unless we put some fire under their feet. So let's get the garbage picked up on the proper day that it's supposed to that we're under contract to be picked up. Otherwise, if there's something in the contract, let's find them. It's not right. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Noel. Debbie Green, 5201 Southwest 199th. I just wanted to share with everyone that the town's advisory, education advisory board is holding their one of the scholarship fundraisers this weekend at Stratford's Fish Fry. The tickets are $10 each, so if anyone here is interested, I have some tickets with me, so just come stop by. Um, I, it's my first time going, but I understand it's good food, great time, so hope everyone comes out and supports the, the town's scholarship fund. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Listen, I'm just I'm, only because you're here, and I'm not going to be here this weekend. I'll I'll donate. take uh, I'll donate uh, for two and give it to somebody that would enjoy. For my wife and myself. Yeah, I got my tickets about an hour ago. Did you? Yeah, we're all set. I'll put it over here. Sorry, just because you're uh, here. I'll have you, hey, Deb. Just whoever, you know, you might want to give them to two other people. I'm not going to be here this weekend, donate. but I want, to, I want to donate that. Okay, for two tickets. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, that concludes public comment, Keith. No other uh, speakers. Thank you. Item number eight, board reports. Any board members, uh, any board members here have uh, any information to pass along to council? Seeing uh, none. Item number uh, nine, council uh, member comments. I'll lead off. You want to go, Gary? Yeah, I'll lead off. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, start on this side of the table, uh, the dais uh, for fun today. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, just a few things I want to announce, and uh, I'll be following up what uh, Debbie Green just mentioned that. The fish fry is coming up. Uh, the Ed Advisory Board's got a lot going on over the next 30 days. And just to bring everybody up to speed on it, on the, uh, the 30th uh, at Stratford's, which is at uh, right underneath I-95 and Hollywood Boulevard. And it's the second, I think it's the second oldest bar in Broward County right now. And it's hard to miss. It's right there. And I'm pretty sure every, everybody who's been a teenager in 
Florida, South Florida, <laughs> has been there at least once. That's a so, Stratford story. And it's, and, it's, and it's a lot of fun. And it's 5 to 8 on the 30th. And then we have a, a really, really fun event that the Education Advisory Board is putting on. It's a food truck in the park. It's at the Equestrian Park. It's 5 to 9 on the, on the 14th of May, uh, Saturday night, I believe it is. And um, it, 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 it is a great time. There's DJs, there's kids, there's uh, uh, usually a half a dozen food trucks. And uh, they have a really great uh, raffle going on. And it, it's a lot of fun for the little kids because they have Chinese raffle and uh, you know various things like that. And, and it's really uh, interesting. And everybody enjoys it. You come out, you bring your own chairs sun umbrella while it's still sun and uh uh you know uh you know there's a lot of coolers out there i'll just go into that i'll just say that <laughs> but uh, uh it's a lot of fun and it's a relaxing evening everybody enjoys it so uh that would be the 14th and then on the 17th we've got something new that we're uh doing uh the ed the education advisory board's doing and that is uh they're partnering partnering up with uh chili's over here in weston and uh on the 17th uh the proceeds Chile is donating 10 percent of their proceeds if you mention that you are here because of the southwest ranches uh, education advisory board i think you need the flyer you have the flyer with you You have to have the flyer with, flyer you. with you i think you have the flyer okay. with okay. you so just we okay. may want to thank you for, for clarifying that yeah. so we need to get the flyers out and right. make them available at least on the 14th so everybody can take them i on think the some of the uh, people are going to be over there out in front kind of handing them out to everybody as they go in that, that's, that's their that's the spirit. <laughs> that's their tentative plan. <laughs> Have a table out front. <laughs> Show them this, and uh, you know, and we'll go over there. But it, it's all for a good cause. You know, it, it all goes to our kids, and uh, you know, everybody. Um, I urge everybody to attend. It's a it's a great night. I'll give, uh, you know, give some relief from uh, the during the week cooking, um, and I just want to mention that uh, uh, for Russell, they get better. Uh, we missed him today. We gave us quite a little bit of a scare, and. Uh, Fortunately, it uh, uh, was not not, really not what we thought it was, and so I just want to wish him speedy recovery. Hopefully, he might be back to work tomorrow, uh, and so, Russell, we're, uh, we can't wait to get back, but very capable hands with the vets, so, uh, you know, uh, keep that in mind. You trained her well. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, that's basically all I have for right now, and I'll Thanks. pass it back. Thanks, Gary. Doug? I'm going to wait. Wait. Ready. Ready? Ready? You up? Um, I've got a, uh, a few things I want to mention. Um, I know we're going to discuss this in, uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks and everything, but uh, Chuck, I'll just tell you that it's interesting this evening that uh, a couple of the issues in D, a couple of the issues uh, that were brought up are actually tied together in my mind. One is the lottery, and the other is this one cent tax. And it's what gives me real hesitation about the one cent tax, is because money can be raised for one reason, very honorable and good reasons, and then that money that's already being spent on it is supplanted and we're just substituting one source for another, and then that other money is, uh, who knows what happens to it. So that's my biggest hesitation with it. It's interesting that both topics came up here in one meeting. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, mention a couple other things. Um, one is an issue that uh, we've had on a couple of, uh, in a couple of areas that, uh, that are related but um, have created a real, a, kind of a, a bigger concern than I've seen for a while, and that has to do with noise in the town. We've had a couple of uh, incidents here recently um, at the uh, Rolling Oaks HOA meeting. We, they spent a good portion of their time talking about uh, how parties and events at the Rolling Oaks Park are getting way out of hand from a noise standpoint. And, uh, and I think uh, the board, I think that uh, staff is taking a look at that. Um, there were a number of uh, suggestions that were brought up that I thought were, had real potential. Um, I think, you know, if I had to sum it up, I would say that today, people are really taking advantage of the good nature of the town in that way and um, you know renting the smallest thing they can there and basically taking over the entire park and um, creating a real nuisance for those especially those neighbors that are relatively close by 
And uh, um, so I think we need to relook at that. I think that, uh, that um, we may want to look at, the thing that sticks in my mind is we may want to um, increase the fee, say maybe $100 uh, on that, and hire somebody, you know, not necessarily, I'm not asking for a member of staff to put in extra time, but uh, hire somebody that uh, can sit there for the day, you know, and pay them that $100. That $100 goes from the fee to that person to ensure that the rules are, uh, are kept, that noise is under control, that people are not abusing it, that the, the property is being properly uh, um, maintained and not being uh, damaged. Um, and, you know, somebody gets $100 to spend the day out there, and we can um, be uh, certain that uh, things are, are happening the way they were uh, uh, supposed to happen, and according to how the rules that these uh, individuals have signed that they will uh, take care of, but, uh, but not always do. I don't want to throw everybody into that category. Certainly many people rent that, and they do a great job, but, uh, but I am concerned about those that rent it and take advantage of it. Uh, the other incident, which is related to that, also noise, is um, parties that go on with noise past 11 o'clock in the evening. Um, and we need to do a better education. Um, frankly, uh, a portion of it goes to uh, um, the Davy uh, police officers that uh, we need to do a better job of so that you all are educated in, uh, in how, what, the, what the rules are. We had an incident uh, a couple of weeks ago where a party was, uh, we had, um, I don't know, Andy, you said eight, I counted seven, doesn't matter, seven or eight's a large number, complaints after 11 p.m. about this party that was too loud. To me, seven or eight complaints after 11 p.m. is just outrageous. It should never go on that long. It should be shut down at 11 o'clock, and that's the end of it. That's the ordinance. That's the rule. And the last one, the last call, came in at 1.25 in the morning, and um, the respondents said they had a permit to be as loud as they wanted till 1.30 in the morning. There is no such permit, and none was issued. So, you know, but that was logged into the Davy log, like, okay, we can, that was acceptable. They were okay until 1.30. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, throwing stones, but I'm just saying we need to educate because they clearly. To the permit. I guess not. I mean, there is no permit, so it would be tough to produce. But, but the reality is, is that, you know, when a call comes in like that and it's after 11 o'clock, we, we need to take action and, and shut that down. And, um, and I understand that there may be situations where we shut it down and then it, it pops back up 15 minutes later and we have to go out there a second time. But then the second time, there should be no tolerance. You know, we should be out there and make sure everybody leaves before because we can't trust them with that. So I can see one. I can see maybe two calls. But beyond that, I can't see it. So certainly seven or eight calls is absolutely unacceptable. So um, I think we need to do some education there um, from an overall standpoint. Andy, I know you've begun that process. But I wanted to mention it here because I think it's important enough. These were two big incidents re dealing with noise in a very short period of time. And um, let's just let's get it taken care of. Before we move on to the next one, uh, Steve, yeah. if you don't mind, I was talking to December earlier, too, and the concern just like you do. Just a couple of questions, uh, uh, Andy or December, whoever wants to answer it. Uh, there's a 50 percent, obviously, fee reduction for residents, uh, correct? Do we rent that facility to non-residents? Okay. And that's something maybe to contemplate as, uh, as well. I mean, it is a facility in the town of Southwest Ranches. It's the residence facility. And there's no question in my mind, if our people are renting that facility, I am sure that they would be very, very respectful of, uh, of uh, those time frames and those uh, issues. So maybe something in the back of our minds as you uh, move forward with regards to addressing this is maybe uh, you know, have to be a resident in this town to be able to uh, rent that facility. And I believe that uh, you probably uh, stop that uh, nonsense just like, uh, just like that because people live in this community, respect it, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's philosophy. And obviously, um, if they're residents here, um, there's a lot more accountability as well. So I'm sure that that issue or problem would probably, uh, quite frankly, uh, go away. But I, I didn't mean to interrupt, Steve. That was one of the things uh, I, too, wanted to talk about. But since you talked about it, just some things to add to uh, that, uh, that scenario. No, that's great, Mayor. Thank you.
Um, the other, the other uh, recommendation that came up there that I thought was a good one was that, you know, if somebody, um, they register for that, they put on a party and they're, you know, are an offender that, that you know, was out of control, um, I think that, uh, say, for two years, they should not be able to rent that facility again. There should be uh, something there. Uh, That's a good idea. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, last thing, was that uh, other than I did want to say wish Russell the best. I, I hope he's, you know, it's good, good news that he'll be back soon, and we appreciate that. But the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I just wanted to, uh, frankly, uh, thank John Monroe. John Monroe has been on the drainage committee uh, since uh, the committee was formed uh, a long time ago now. And not only has he been on the committee since it was formed, but uh, he has been doing the, uh, the least, uh, the most difficult job to fill on any committee, that being the secretary. And he's been doing it since the committee was formed. So he has been uh, just an amazing member of that committee. He's done an excellent job. He's kept fantastic minutes. He's done it consistently. When he showed up there, he, uh, he has his minute book. He could, he could read off minutes literally from 2003 if we asked him to because he's got it right there with him every time. He's done an amazing job. He's decided to step down from the committee, um, and I just wanted to publicly thank him for all the work he's done, he's done on that committee and, and, and outside that committee as well, but especially on that committee. He's just an exceptional guy, and he's done a, an exceptional job there. So. Um, with that said, he was my appointment on the committee. Um, I'm looking for volunteers, for people that, uh, for someone that would like to join that committee. Um, it's, uh, it's a very important committee, as all the committees are, but it's a very important one, and um, it guides the TISDOR project as well as many other uh, capital and drainage projects in town. So if anyone has an interest in that, I would love to hear from you and talk to you about it. And, uh, and, and I can tell you about it and see if it's a good match. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. <coughs> Doug? I'm good. Good. Okay. And uh, again, John Monroe, thank you. And uh, Steve, thank you for, uh, for bringing that up. Just a uh, long history here of, of dedicated uh, service to uh, that uh, committee and, uh, and others is, uh, as well. His uh, expertise and uh, precision will be uh, sorely missed, that's, uh, that's for sure. <clears throat> and I did speak to Russell uh, earlier that uh, he is doing uh, okay. Just uh, thank God it wasn't what uh, initially uh, was, the, uh, was the concern, and uh, we expect him to be back uh, very, very soon. And, uh, and Russell, we're thinking about you, but I got to tell you, we got a pretty darn uh, good uh, replacement in uh, in Yvette. and uh, Yvette, thanks for uh, for okay. filling it at such a short notice and doing such a fantastic job. Appreciate it very much. I have no further comments, and uh, that concludes co council member comments. Item number ten, Keith. Mayor, uh, I'll be brief. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Not because he wants to be, but because yeah. he has to be. <laughs> uh, before you is a resolution that will come back in uh, two weeks. Um, I'd like to thank December and Russell and whoever else on town staff from uh, Andy for working uh, directly with Katie Edwards from my office in putting together the resolution that will go to the South Brower, to the South Brower, that will go to uh, South Florida Water Management District to provide for um, a mechanism to start the process to get the two uh, bridges over the C11. So that's been drafted, and it will be back before you in two weeks. Thank you, Mayor. Great job, Keith. Thank you. Great uh, job, December. Great job to everybody that uh, got that uh, done. Look forward to it uh, being on our agenda in, uh, in two weeks. All right, that concludes uh, legal comments number 10. Item number 11, administration comments. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. How's your throat, Andy? Thank you, Mayor. Just to follow up on what Council Member Bright Cruz was speaking about with the noise ordinance, Robert and I have already been in communication about it. Uh, an article in the newsletter to re-educate our residents and get that information out there. And I just want to let you know that I met as recently as yesterday with Chief Lynn, Assistant Chief Dunn, and Captain Angle from uh, from Davy Fire, uh, Davy Fire. I'm sorry, Davy Police. And uh, they're they're very clear on our noise ordinance and and certainly what the expectation is going forward. Great. Okay. Great. So I just want to let you know that we had conveyed that there was some talk about the surtax uh, before. I do have kind of an updated report for you on what municipalities have already approved 
the, the concept of, of that surtax. I, I will tell you that I've, I've discussed all of this with you individually. You've all been uh, certainly concerned about the, the potential imposition of a new tax and where it goes. As you'll see from that list, we're, we're one of several municipalities who hasn't approved it as of yet. And there's some that have said no. It, it is something that we're following very closely. Uh, there is a, on Monday afternoon, there's a city manager's meeting to discuss this very issue. So I look forward to bringing back more information for you, keeping you posted on that. But as the mayor indicated earlier, we're going to have to schedule this for some sort of a discussion. Uh, you know, this appears at this point to be headed for the ballot. Uh, I don't know if it'll get there, but it appears to be headed for the ballot. And then obviously, you know, passage becomes a whole other challenge uh, in and of itself. But we'll try to keep you posted. This is something that uh, between discussions between the county and the MPO, has changed not quite on a daily basis, but certainly on a weekly basis, and we'll continue to do everything we can to keep you all posted and, and up to speed on that. And, and real quickly, uh, Andy, because I did uh, misspeak, because I said there were other municipalities that voted no. There are members from uh, other municipalities that serve uh, on the MPO that initially when that vote was uh, taken that uh, that said no. I think there was five or six. I know with regards to uh, sending out those uh, ILAs to uh, those municipalities. I don't know if it has become uh, official yet. So uh, again, I, uh, I misspoke. It might have been uh, premature, but I will tell you there's five or six that, uh, municipalities that serve on the MPO that uh, voted against the, uh, the cent uh, increase. Yeah, you're correct, Mayor. That was the MPO meeting that we attended where the MTO, MPO voted to advance this forward, and I, I think it passed 19 to 5. There were municipalities who voted against it. Uh, one of which was, was Davey voted against it, yeah. but the Davey Council has voted in favor right. of moving the, the surtax forward. There you go. So I don't know if, any, if there are any municipalities as a whole that have voted in opposition. I think the ones that have voted have voted in, in favor to move it forward. Doesn't mean that there aren't people on, on certain councils and commissions across the county that are, that are opposed to That's it. That's why I wanted to clarify that. Thank yeah. you, Andy. Uh, one of the items we have on the agenda tonight, I don't necessarily want to talk about that item now, but I do want to Bring talk about up. some other things related. We have an item tonight that we're going to talk about. The last resolution on the agenda tonight deals with the technology fee and and uh, building fees, permit fees for our residents. You know, the council had tasked staff with taking a look at all the fees that we charge really across the board. We want to simplify the process as much as we can for our residents, and we want to reduce fees. And some of that started even, you know, a year plus ago when we brought zoning in-house and, and Robert Solera took that over from CSI and we had some reductions from the fees that our residents had been charged uh, you know, previously under Melgren. And I think that's worked out very well for our residents. We are currently looking at our, our building permit fees. We are going to look at engineering fees. There are all, tonight's action is certainly not the last step in this process. Uh, this is one limited item, and I'll leave the, the, the conversation about that one certainly till we get to it. But I do want to make it clear to you, to you all right now uh, that this is a, a very broad process. We're, we're looking at every fee, every process that our residents go through, and uh, we're, we're, you know, I want to assure you that uh, you know, based on council direction, staff will do everything we can to, to minimize that and better protect our residents. Andy, if I can join in with you just a minute on that and, and remind the council a little bit about how do we got where we are related to this. Um, back when we were over on Dykes Road in those trailers and the town was getting started, we were offsetting the cost of the construction fees to the tune of between two and $350,000 a year. And we made a decision, I wasn't on the council at the time, to recoup the fees. And apparently we've gone a little bit too far. And that's part of what, what this homework's being done and all that. So. Tonight's uh, a partial fix to it, and as Andy mentioned, they're doing more homework moving forward to it. But we, I don't believe we ever intended it to be a profit area. It was just a cost recovery. So I just want to remind you all of that, that we never intended it to be a profit area. We just want to recover our costs. So in moving forward, I just want that in the back of your minds because we stepped a little bit too far so doug, we do need to fix it and doug, they're working on it doug I, I have a question for you yeah how much profit i mean profit's probably the wrong word how much overage or surplus are we talking about um i can't tell you because marty's not here and whatnot and i'm gonna let andy answer that question 
<laughs> yeah, if I may, there there are multiple areas on, on tonight, which will be the technology fee that we're going to get to in a little bit. I, I've got that information. I'll be able to share that with you. Certainly, when we get to that item, on cap in general and building permit fees, that's something we're working very aggressively with. We actually had a meeting set with them this morning. We we're hoping to get that finalized today. As, as you all know, Russell was out. And he's done a lot of the heavy lifting on this. He had a lot of the data together, so we're going to reschedule that meeting. But I, I have certainly every expectation, as I sit here, that for our next council meeting in a couple of weeks, we're going to have that item before you, that we're going to be looking at that a little bit further to get those savings where we can. And, and we'll certainly identify, uh, council member, the, you know, the question you have on, on, on what those pre proceeds are and what it means to the town. Go ahead, Freddie. Go ahead, Freddie. <laughs> Your mic's not on. That's completely in-house. No. Are, are you talking about building permits? Yes. Cap. It, it's no. in-house and not because it's, we're, we're still contracting through CAP. However, they have permit clerks who are yeah. based here. Yeah. But our residents Mildred's are coming out. here and everything's being handled from this building. Yes. Yeah, Mildred's out of it completely, right? But, I mean, let's put it to this way. Before, we used to have to go to Milton's office in here, but everything's handled right here now. Almost everything goes through, Robert. If there's site plan, for example, like Kevin Hart's project tonight, yeah. something like that is still going through Melgrin, but the vast majority of development review is going through, Robert, here in this building. Yes. Because I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but I've been familiar with it for quite a while because I do a lot of permit applications for my church. And it got out of hand. Uh, there because of the fact it was split so much. You had to go three or four different places. So we at the time, uh, trying to offset some of those, we did raise that fee to cover some of those costs. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping now that we've got them back in house that we can do away with some of that that it, in, in, in their things because it did go from a little bit to a very big bit and now I think it's coming back to where where it's reasonable. Right. I think I, our intent is is twofold, really, is to simplify the process as much as we can and, and, and avoid some of that running around, as well as to try to reduce the cost where we can as well. And we've got a little bit more his, his, uh, historical data at this point. You know, Marty, as you guys know, does just an outstanding job with finance. So it gives us a chance to really look at it and get a very accurate picture of where we are and where we need to be. So like I said, the building permits itself, I expect to bring that back before you in two weeks. I was hoping that we'd have at least come to some sort of terms and agreement earlier today because we were unable to have that meeting we'll reschedule that for next week but we should be on track to move that forward and we'll just continue the process of, of allowing you to to evaluate and set the policy that you need to set well we personally my opinion on it is we need to cover our expenses but we don't need to make a profit on on, on this something like this or something that the people are entitled to they have to come here they got to do it and I, I want to see us cover that cost. But then again, I think at one time we'd get to the point where we was making a profit on it. Yeah, I think uh, certainly not to tell tales out of school, but I've, I've worked with all of you individually, discussed the issue, and I think there's, uh, uh, you, you've all been very clear on this. So uh, it, it's not like we're wondering what the direction is. We, we know what council's looking for and we're working on it. Okay, and Mayor, last but not least, I, d I do want to touch on trash, and I do want to take a moment to introduce Brian Thomason and uh, Jason, who's the supervisor. They're here from Bergeron Services. They're the ones who, are, who have fixed our bulk problem, certainly uh, have improved it drastically from where it was. I know they're doing an outstanding job. I know they've had some challenges, as our other trash trucks have as well, with the guardrail construction going along uh, Griffin Road. And I don't know how many of you guys have a chance to get out there during the course of a day, but traffic is frequently backed up. It's down to one lane. And, and so if you're, if you're working that area and you're driving back and forth, you're getting held up constantly. I'm not, certainly not trying to offer any excuses. I think they've done a great job of trying to stay on top of things. And I want to thank them for their efforts because they have, I'll say, largely removed one headache. Uh, to talk about our solid waste for a moment and, and the recycling, uh, I had a conversation with them as, as recently as today. Uh, I would recap it for you, but it's probably not fit for a public meeting. <laughs> uh, I'll say I was extremely firm and, and very clear with, with the issues. Uh, I got a lovely apology email, which I can share with you, but doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't fix the problem. Uh, actually, this is the garbage contract. You can see I've got some post-it notes in there. I've identified some opportunities. Our, our 
ability to slap them or slam them are fairly limited uh, and, it, and it can be difficult to do. But I've identified some, some key points that, that Keith and I will be talking a little bit further on and we're going to send them a letter and, uh, and, and certainly make it official. But that's absolutely the direction we're going in. I tried to give them every, every opportunity to rectify. And, and while I have an apology and I have reasons, it doesn't fix the problem and that's not good enough. I, you know, I recognize that, but, but we are continuing to work at it and we'll continue to do so. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Just send Newell to their office. We'll fix it in a hurry. Okay, item number... Uh, Deputizing. That's right, exactly. <laughs> item number uh, 12. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of South of Tranches, Florida, approving the first modification to the agreement with A.C. Schultz of Florida Incorporated, DBA, Jaffer Well Drilling, approving an additional one-year term authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into the first modification to the agreement and provide, providing an effective date. Mayor, this just gives a one-year extension on the current contract for the fire wells. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second to approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing none, public comment is now uh, closed. Again, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns, Council? Seeing none, Yvette, call the question, please. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Bright Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 13. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending resolution number 2012-031 by reducing the town's administrative training and technology fee for residential properties and providing an effective date. Thank you. Council? Motion to approve. Second. We have a uh, motion and a second to uh, approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing uh, none, public comment is now uh, closed. Again, we have a motion and a second to uh, approve. I think that uh, most of uh, my issues uh, you all had uh, talked about and were addressed uh, moving forward, and we still have some uh, work to do. With that being said, uh, call the question, please, Yvette. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Bright Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 14, the approval of the minutes for the February 18, 2016 regular meeting and the March 10, 2016 regular meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. And again, I always throw it out there because we've been corrected in the past. Any, yeah. uh, that's right. Any members of the public wish to uh, fix any of uh, the minutes? I see uh, D raising her finger. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, he did. I sure did. I absolutely did. Yeah. Absolutely did. I did. 250 <laughs> percent. I'll even go higher than that. Watch okay. See, no public see. comment or no uh, no uh, corrections for the minutes. Uh, again, we have a motion and a second to approve. Yvette, call the question, please. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Bright Cruz? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes, that concludes all our agenda items. This meeting is hereby adjourned with your consent, and I'm sure it's unanimous. Amen. Thank you all very much, and thanks to the public for coming out. Always a pleasure to see you.